Foi lançado na Índia o satélite Amazônia 1. É o primeiro satélite de observação da Terra 100% projetado, integrado, testado e operado pelo Brasil. Ele será utilizado para monitorar todo o território brasileiro e surgiu de um esforço muito grande dos cientistas brasileiros, do INPE, Instituto Nacional de Pesquisas Espaciais. 17 minutos após o lançamento ao espaço, esse satélite se separou, fez as primeiras atividades previstas, como a abertura do painel solar, a estabilização de sua orientação em relação à Terra, a verificação dos sistemas e a colocação do modo de prontidão. A missão vai fornecer principalmente imagens para que seja possível monitorar o desmatamento na região amazônica e também a agricultura em todo o território nacional. A gente vai olhar aqui no nosso telão né, alguns dados, então, sobre este satélite. Olha aí. 13 anos de pesquisa, né, esse satélite, até chegar de fato nesse lançamento histórico que foi registrado, portanto, neste fim de semana. Ele pesa no total 637 quilos e para a gente ter uma ideia, ele vai orbitar a 700 quilômetros da Terra. Muita coisa, né, bem interessante. Aliás... Tem mais detalhes sobre isso. A parceria com a Índia foi essencial para colocar o satélite em órbita. A nossa âncora Paula Valdez conversou com o cônsul-geral do país em São Paulo, o Almit Mishra, que a gente vai acompanhar agora esse bate-papo. Mr. Amit, welcome and thanks for talking to us. É, a primeira pergunta que eu vou fazer para o Mr. Amit é a razão da escolha, né? Quais foram as razões para que a Índia fosse o país escolhido para fazer esse satélite, esse lançamento do satélite brasileiro? Well, in India we we are proud to have a space program which is unique in the world, a very high success rate, but we combine this high success rate with the uh, low cost. That's why our uh, space launch program, space vehicle launch vehicle program is uh, very competitive when you compare it to other countries. Uh, uh, you know, it has a history of, uh, you know, being the credible ride for satellite launch. It has launched uh, more than 340 foreign satellites for more than 30 countries. So, yeah, it's, it's an ideal launch vehicle for first Brazilian indigenous, indigenously made satellite vehicle, Emogenia First. And we at India are proud that Indian space research organization, our space agency launched the Brazilian satellite. E como funciona essa parceria entre India e Brasil? With respect to Amazonia 1, uh, you know, we should uh, we should always remember that this launch was unique in a lot of aspects. This was first launch of by our space agency in 2021. I say this is unique because you all, we all know that the COVID-19 pandemic put a spanner in the, you know, all operations all over the world. It doesn't matter which field you are talking about. In India also, uh, this, uh, um, this satellite was supposed to launch in the mid of last year, but it got delayed. So we are glad to see it launched early in this year. And it was also important for our own Indian space program because this became the first commercial uh, mission by uh, New Space India Limited. That's a new commercial arm of our space agency that was announced last year. The launch was done under a commercial uh, arrangement with the US-based uh, space flight, Inc. Um, but uh, Amazonia is uh, probably the first Brazilian satellite to be launched uh, by India. So we see it as a major milestone. Now coming back to if you look at, look, uh, look at it from the government's perspective, uh, India and Brazil do have a history of cooperation in the space science age. Uh, since 2002, there are institutional arrangements that are in place between our space agencies. And Brazilian um, space uh, centers have been receiving data from our satellites. We have received uh, support from uh, Brazilian uh, ground tracking stations in uh, Cueva and Alcantara for our missions. We see this partnership develop further. During the visit of President Bolsonaro to India last year, space was one of the key areas that both leaders identified 
and both countries were tasked to work out a program for this. We see this as the first step and I'm, we have no doubt that this will develop into something more substantial in coming years. Quais são os ganhos que essa missão traz para os dois países? O que que Índia e Brasil acabam ganhando com isso? Well, for Brazil, it is uh, it is a milestone being the first uh, satellite that has been 100%, as you mentioned, fabricated, developed, tested. Uh, it's the result of hard work of Brazilian scientists. We are proud to have been associated uh, as uh, you know launching partner for this um, important um, satellite. Uh, in terms of its capability, you, you are probably aware that it's a, uh, it's will be used to uh, monitor the um, forestry and the diversified agriculture related. So it has that relevance. But if you uh, look at the space sciences itself, uh, probably often we don't realize that the the impact of space sciences and cooperation and development in that field uh, is is beyond what uh, we see in, in, in by our at the first glance. You know, on telecommunications, weather, agriculture, the data that is generated by the space program and the space satellites has a lot of values. In the mid of last year, we and we announced major reforms in space sector, allowing private sector to be the partner for the first time. So we are trying to create a competition, and in private sector, we have been surprised to see the sudden growth in last last eight or ten months, where new startups have. Uh, come up in uh, India and they are so quickly moving in terms of participation with our uh, official agency. And same way, I, we see a lot of potential. Brazil has a history and of a lot of expertise, and especially in the private sector, in the whole aerospace domain. And probably there's a lot of possibility of collaboration between the private sector on both sides. Agora falando de coronavírus, a gente fala sobre a Covaxin Factory, né? que é a vacina que ainda precisa ser inclusive aprovada aqui no Brasil pela Anvisa. Como é que vai funcionar a parceria entre Índia e Brasil nesse caso? Well, I, I often say that uh, you know, COVID was a time which just reflected the resilience of our uh, partnership and friendship with Brazil. You know, be it with the supply of uh, hydroxychloroquine or for COVID vaccines, Brazil was the uh, first country which received priority in supplies from India. You are aware that um, two um, two consignments of four million doses have already arrived in Brazil uh, for of Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine that was uh, manufactured by Serum Institute. But a much larger arrangement is already in place. I understand Ministry of Health has signed an agreement with Bharat Biotech for supply of 20 million uh, doses uh, over the next five, six months. And uh, uh, right now, uh, we are in the process of uh, obtaining uh, the final approval of the uh, vaccine, both in India and also uh, the, for, from a regulatory agency and visa in Brazil. I believe whenever this is done, you would see the, the supply of um, co-vaccine starting from India. Uh, it is important and it is a matter of satisfaction for us to note that uh, India, Indian industry, Indian pharma industry, India vaccine industry is playing a role in um, Brazil's fight. Finalmente, para encerrar, eu pergunto para o senhor qual é a expectativa aí sobre a relação Brasil e Índia para os próximos anos. In the last two years, uh, have shown us how close we are. You know, if I can start from the visit of uh, uh, President Bolsonaro to India last year, when you had more than 15 agreements signed covering a wide range of areas uh, of government to government or private sector collaboration. Um, a huge business delegation, I believe, largest ever business delegation accompanied uh, uh, President uh, during the visit and a lot of conversation started in different sectors. Then we had the coronavirus pandemic, but despite the disruption by the pandemic, if you look at the bilateral trade figures, it has not been that that badly affected as was original apprehensions among both sides. We have a lot of potential. We have to just, uh, once these uh, stakeholders get involved, we will have, uh, you know, 
the full potential of the collaboration coming into play and we will see the target of on the commercial side being realized we are very optimistic about this bilateral relationship in the new world when i say new world in the post covid world covid has reshaped it in many ways uh, in the post covid world brazil remains priority partner for india